Hello and welcome to LiveWise Buy, Hold, Sell. I'm Ali Selby and today we're going to figure out how you can get rich without having to die trying. Exchange traded funds or ETFs are a great way for investors to get exposure to equities and other asset classes without the risk that comes by investing in a single stock. So to find out how you can build your multi-million dollar portfolio and the ETFs that advisors recommend to do so, we're joined by Felicity Thomas from Shore & Partners and Ben Nash from Pivot Wealth. First up, we're going to talk about buzzwords. Transitory was definitely the buzzword of 2021, but this year I've been hearing a lot of the word volatile. Ben, I might start on you. How can ETS help investors through this volatile period? Well, look, I think these days there are so many options out there when it comes to ETFs, different sectors, thematics and niches, which allow investors to choose the areas that they feel able to balance the volatility within their portfolios. So just the, the wide array of choice gives investors more control and they're just getting more and more accessible and more and more cost effective as well. Over to you, Felicity. Do you agree? Is there any other way that ETS can help investors through this volatile period? Yeah, definitely. Look, you said it in your intro, right? It allows people to buy a single position and get diversification across different asset classes. I also like the fact that you can actually get access to bond portfolios, bond ETFs, as well as physical gold that you usually wouldn't be able to get with, you know, a $5,000 investment whilst they're usually about two fifty dollars for a bond portfolio. Equity markets typically return around 7 to 8% per annum on average. With inflation and rising interest rates, what can investors expect? Look, so I guess my point here is inflation isn't necessarily a bad thing or something scary. You hear on the news, it's inflation, it's scary, negative, negative, negative. It actually means that the economy is growing. So that's why I think that, you know, we shouldn't be too scared of it. I think the only other thing that I want to add is we're kind of changing to a kind of a bit stagnation. So we're moving more from, you know, your financials to more materials. Ben, over to you. We're moving into this new market regime, as Felicity said there. What kind of average returns can investors expect from index-like products? Well, look, I think choosing uh, or, or forecasting investment returns over a short-term investment horizon is always fraught with, with danger. But what the uh, history has shown us is that time tends to de-risk all risk. So clearly it's going to have an impact on markets, companies and the economy in the shorter term. But over the medium to longer term, it's likely that that impact will be temporary and markets will remain around that 7 to 8% mark that you mentioned. They say the first million is the hardest to make and don't I know that. Ben, how much do investors need to invest and for how long to build a million dollar portfolio? Well, it depends on the time period that you want to do that over, but I was just doing some numbers off the back of us chatting a little bit uh, before firing this up and you can save and invest as little as $53 a week investing into just the share market average, a nice ASX index fund or even a diversified index fund or something like that. That will turn into just a bit over a million dollars in a 40 year timeline. Um, obviously, the more that you invest, the, sh the shorter you can um, make that time period, but it's all possible for you know, just a few bucks every day, really. Is there a number in your mind, Felicity, that people can invest to make a million dollars? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. So say you're 30, I wish I was still 30. I could invest $740 a month, every month for 35 years at a 6% annual compound return. And in 35 years, I'd have a million dollars. For those starting out, are there any growth ETFs that you would recommend so they can really, you know, get those compound returns going? Yes, definitely. But you need to have a high appetite for risk. The ETF that I was thinking is LNAS, which is a long NASDAQ 100 ETF. Now, obviously in the last year, it's down slightly compared to the NASDAQ 100. However, if you actually invested since inception, which is 2020, you'd be up about 28% versus the NASDAQ 13%. So yes, you get you know one to two times more, a lot more risk though. So you need to be able to cope with the downside as well, but long-term investor, right? Yeah. Over to you, Ben. Is there a growth ETF that you recommend for those investors starting out on their journey? Yeah, I like VDHG, the Vanguard Diversified High Growth ETF. Uh, it's 35% Australian index, 55% international index, 10% defensive. Uh, rock solid, it's 
because it is a diversified uh, index fund, it rebalances automatically for you. So I don't really believe in set and forget investments, but this one is something close to that in that it'll do a bit of the work for you. It's got a great yield, re reasonably low costs, and you can sleep like a baby at night knowing that you're just going to get the market returns over time. There may be a few viewers out there who already have a million dollar investment portfolio. Ben, is there a more defensive growth ETF that you think they could use? Yeah, I think sticking with the Vanguard theme, I like VHY, the Vanguard High Yield Index Fund. Uh, it's an Australian index which is weighted to companies that pay higher dividend yields. The long term yield on that is a bit over 6%, which is really solid, got a high degree of franking, so nice and tax effective. It's not, I wouldn't call it a defensive ETF in that it is essentially 100% growth investments, but because in Australia companies are really reluctant to muck around with their dividend policy, that the, the yield protects you while you might see some capital fluctuations. You've got a nice solid yield, nice income producing investment over time, so it's a win for me. Felicity, over to you. For more experienced investors, is there an ETF that you would recommend that's a little bit more defensive? That's actually quite funny that you say that. So I was actually going to say the Vanguard diversified growth ETF for my million dollar portfolio because I like that it's diversified. It's got that 70-30 split, Australian equities, international equities, fixed income, bonds, as well as emerging markets. Um, and the returns about eight to nine percent per annum. Felicity, last one for you today. What's the biggest mistake that you're seeing in clients' portfolios at the moment, particularly when they're trying to build up their wealth? Honestly, it is panic selling. People freak out and you know, they see the market drop a little bit and just want to sell and get into cash. And then they never know when to get back in. They're trying to time the market. It's just not possible. No one can time the market. I don't think anyone has been able to time the market every single, you know, on every single instance. So honestly, panic selling um, and not just keeping to your long term strategy. What do you recommend to those investors that are trying to time the market or who are panic selling right now? Don't look at your portfolio. Just don't, you don't need to look at it every day. If you've got a good diversified ETF or a bundle of different ETFs, you don't need to look at it. You know, take the long route, check it once a year. Over to you, Ben. Is there a major issue that you're seeing in investors' portfolios when they're trying to grow their wealth? And what do you often suggest to them to solve that problem? Yeah, look, I completely agree with Felicity there. The panic selling is a bit of an issue. I'd say that just as, as much of an issue, especially for younger people that are still building and accumulating wealth, is not understanding their investments well enough to be as aggressive as they probably should. So when people don't understand where the risks are coming from in the investments that they do have and then how they can manage those risks, it means that they can be a bit fearful when there are sort of the market volatility conditions that we're seeing at the moment. Whereas when you take the time to educate yourself and understand those risks, have a good risk management strategy in place, it means when you see some of the volatility like we've, we're seeing at the moment or like the bigger volatility that we saw in the middle of COVID, you feel really confident to push hard and then you get to reap the rewards of that. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed that ETF special of Buy, Hold, Sell. If you did, why not give it a like? Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're adding new content every week.